Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. This is another paid request. This time for Great B. Thank you so much for that, man. And for those who want to request pretty much any type of videos, tier lists, reactions, uh, re reviews, reviews, a topic, a list, a ranking, whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the 1968 film Coden's Bluff. Stars Clint Eastwood, as directed by Don Siegel. This is a film that they did before, of course, the classic Dirty Harry. But they did a couple films together. This was the first one. They also did Two Meals for Sister Sarah. I think The Beguiled. Dirty Harry is their most famous one together. And Don Siegel, I know, is one of the directors that Clint Eastwood was most inspired by when he became a director. I think he said the two directors inspired him was Sergio Leone and Don Siegel. Now, this is a film I've seen before, and watch it again, I definitely think Dirty Harry was much better. Uh, this one, while I don't hate the film, I was never a big fan of it. Uh, it definitely... I don't mind the opening of the film. He's an Arizona deputy sheriff, and he goes off and is looking for this guy who starts shooting at him in the desert. He's able to in his jeep kick up a dust storm get to the guy and there's definitely a bit of that cool badass factor you know lighting the cigarette up you know, hitting the guy in the stomach for you trying to shoot me and throughout the film there is some fun lines of dialogue like when he takes the prisoner and goes back and there's a little sweetie pie for him <coughs> she's like who's that Oh, he just killed a woman. What? Just his wife, that's all. <clears throat> so, I am a fan of Clint Eastwood. I, I like the guy. I like a lot of his movies. Some people grew up with John Wayne. Some people grew up more Clint Eastwood. I'm more of a Clint Eastwood guy. I mean, I like John Wayne's Rio Bravo, but... this I grew up more with Eastwood. <clears throat> And whether it be his The Man With No Name Trilogy or High Plains Drifter, whether it be In the Line of Fire or the Dirty Harry films, which I like all all five of them. My favorite being Manum Force. And then my second favorite is The Deadpool. Uh, Heartbreak, Heartbreak Ridge is great. And of course, he came up, became a pretty damn as well-established director, Unforgiven, among others. Definitely had a successful career. I mean, hell, I love every every which way you but loose in the sequel any which way you can. So, I mean, there's not a lot of Eastwood films I outright hate. There's some that I think is just kind of meh. Absolute Power, I thought was meh. And this one, you know, for the most part, I thought was kind of meh. And I get the idea behind it. And there's some decent moments to it. Like I said, the opening, I don't mind. Uh, the rest of the plot is him... Going to New York, he needs to extradite a fugitive. He's given the runaround by some of the cops, including Lee J. Cobb, who Lee J. Cobb, he was the lieutenant in the first Exorcist film. He's in the original Twelve Angry Men, and Lee J. Cobb has some fun, you know, snarky moments, and his dialogue just changes with Eastwood's character. The prisoners in the ward for LSD. And Eastwood is that establishment of Eastwood's principles are a bit different than the way people are in the city. So, like, you have this guy in the police station who's a prisoner just grabbing this lady's tit. And Eastwood just smashed the shit out of him. And the lady gets mad at him because the lady's a probation officer and that's one of her clients. And she's <laughs> acting pretty bitchy to him. But Eastwood's like, hey, uh, sorry, ma'am, uh, first time here, and kind of new to what you guys do, and let's get some dinner, and <laughs> it always pushes her into it. And a lot of the film is this romance between him and the probation officer, and it felt like it was more romance than action. I remember even the first time watching this going... 
the romance stuff I thought was kind of boring. I didn't think it was that interesting. It didn't really pull me in. I wasn't really that intrigued by it. Uh, maybe more people would enjoy that. That's why uh, one of the reasons I like Dirty Harry is that that seemed more straightforward and you no, know, this is about Eastwood, this is about the jobs, about the action. Maybe just for a lot of reasons, if I watch a Clint Eastwood film, it's usually not for Eastwood the romantic, it's for Eastwood the the badass. So I guess that's more of why I'm looking for an Eastwood films. Although, again, I, I like Different Witch Way But Loose, which is a very different form for Eastwood. Just what happens eventually is that he does get to the prisoner, which is played by a guy named Don Stroud. And while moving him, he gets beaten by other people who are with Don Stroud. And he's trying to find the guy. The New York cops go, no, it, this is our jurisdiction, we're going to deal with this. But Eastwood's ego is pretty damn bruised, so he's going to try to find this guy. And like I said, when it's more of Eastwood in the sort of... How do I want to put it? Fish out of water element. I think those are the better elements and better moments of Prudence Bluff. Because we just see him as a badass in his element at the beginning of the film. And then again, some of the way he observes New York... Or when he goes to talk to the prisoner's mom, who's giving him some gruff. You know what you are? Fancy. And by her constantly talking, he's able to get some information out of it. The way at one point he's in a nightclub. Very, very 60s type of nightclub. Makes sense, 1968. And he meets a pimp. And I recognize a guy. It's Albert Popwell. If you've seen the Dirty Harry films, you've seen this guy. Because he's in the first four and he plays a different character each time. Because Albert Popwell, he's the guy that in the first Dirty Harry, the criminal that's on the ground and Dirty has a famous. Did I fire. Did he fire five seconds? Did he sit. Try and get the line right. Did he fire six shots or only five? With all this excitement, I can't remember. Do you feel lucky, punk? And Albert Popwell is the guy on the ground hearing this with the gun in his face. Uh, he was Dirty Harry's partner in Sudden Impact. In, I want to say... Oh no, was it... Uh, no, I'm trying to think. No, Madam Force. No, oh, God, I'm trying to remember now. I think Madam Force, it was his partner. His partner, Madam Force. Sudden Impact, he was the guy who gave him a bit of... Gave him the gun. No, God, I'm trying to remember. It's been a while since I've seen the Dirty Harry films. And Madam Force... It was his partner. In The Enforcer, he was a guy that was working with a militant group, but then they were kind of the fall guys, and they were really innocent for what was really going on during the plot. And then in Sudden Impact, he was a guy that met Eastwood when he was trying out this gun. He's like, where the hell did you get that? And is able to get him some information and help. I always thought he worked well in each role that he was playing. Kind of surprised he wasn't in the Deadpool because he was in the first four. So I'm like, wonder why they didn't put him in the last one. But you see Eastwood's reaction to the whole nightclub stuff. And there's even a bit that he gets tricked by this lady to go to his pool hall. And he has got to beat the shit out of these guys. And he just taking a, a beating on himself, and then the sirens are heard, and then Eastwood just beats the shit out of them. Uh, 
I mean, nothing extravagant. It's 1968. But, you know, some decent camera work. There's this low shots when Eastwood's on the pool table, trying, you know, smacking at people. There is a motorcycle chase in the finale that goes through Fort Tryon Park, which there's a nice variety of angles going up and down stairs. But I guess what I'm saying is with Tourist Bluff, it's not wall-to-wall -wall action. It's not a whole lot of action. If you don't expect in an action movie, you may be disappointed. Like I said, other than the little bit of the opening, the pool hall scene, low fight, and the motorcycle bit, which leads to a foot chase, that's really it in terms of action. So that's what I mean. It just felt like not enough action and too much romance. Because I guess if you're engaged by the romance between him and the probation officer, you'll enjoy this a lot more. For me, I just thought it was kind of meh. You know, the, the chemistry was eh, indifferent. I did the best way to put it. Don Stroud, you didn't get a whole lot of chances to have him showcase as a villain. He's a little bit in prison, then he escapes, and then you don't, you don't see him for a while. Is Eastwood trying to find clues about it. So, Don Stroud isn't able to make much of an impression either way as a villain. <clears throat> I say it would have been nice to see even more of the fish out of water quality, or a little bit more of this intense, maybe tighten up the pacing of the film. I don't. I'm in the score. I wasn't really big on. I definitely think the score, when when Don Cito and Clint Eastwood worked together, the score for Dirty Harry definitely felt more fitting compared to the score. The score of this sometimes felt obtrusive. Like this is one of those movies that I just, like I said, I didn't hate it. Eastwood definitely commands the screen, has that presence that could be milked for days. You tell easily why he was a star. He had the, the voice, the look, the mannerisms, and he helps pretty much any movie he's in, even if it's lesser quality. He helps immensely. If it was a different guy, that didn't have nearly any of those traits, uh, this would be a much more a harder sit. But yeah, Putin's bluff. Like I said, I was never a big fan of this movie, and watch it again. It still hasn't changed. I know a lot of people love the film because they're one of, you know, Eastwood classic. I just don't feel that way. Like I said, I think that it has nice moments. Another moment where he first goes to his apartment and he realizes how shitty it is in his stay in New York. And this lady tries to be hooked up with them and he says no. But he notices slyly. You ready to pick my pot yet? And gives her like a big tick in the ass to go, and she gets pissed about it. Like there's nice, some nice little funny moments, like that bit, or a few of the interactions with him, Lee J. Tom, or like I said, the little bit with him talking with the prisoner Don Stroud's mom. If I said wife, I meant to say mom. Little moments of that. Uh, the pool hall bit remind me a bit of Code of Silence later on, which I thought that she did a bit better compared to this, and I would say a bit of a better movie. I would say Code of Silence, I thought, did this a bit better than here. I, I just... I thought the romance was just overwhelming the, the rest of the movie and kind of dragged it down to a bit, going... Just, and I did it. He's a leading man. I, I, I did the idea. Man. It just, like I said, Dirty Harry did it better. The Dirty Harry films, I thought, did this kind of stuff better. And I would rather watch any of those any day over this again. Because at the end of the day, like, nice moments, but I thought it was kind of boring. 
I don't just like this review. Boring. <laughs> if you love it more than me, that's cool. It's not a piece of shit. Far from it. It's just not not a favorite of mine. At best, it's watchable for Eastwood alone. But, I mean, I've seen him do a lot better. I know a lot of people like Tarantino are big fans of the movie, to each their own. But, like I said, just wish it was more exciting. I wish it was more thrilling. I wish there was more action. I wish more stuff happened. Was that, like I said before. But, thanks for watching. Take care, and we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.